Today, ladies and gents, we're going back to a better time in life. We're going back to June of 2001 to the King of Ring. And we're not talking about, you know, the King of the Ring matches themselves. We're not talking about even the title match between Stone Cold, Chris Jericho, and Chris Benoit. Where we also saw Booker T show up. We're not talking about any of that. We're not going to talk about Edge being King of the Ring. And look where he went after that moment, you know, from all that. So, yeah, everything changed. Today, we're going to talk about something that was quite bloody. I have no idea how one person even left on their feet at all. We'll talk about the horrific thuds, the violence, and just the pure, just heart and grit, I want to say. That was shown in this match. We're talking about the street fight between Shane McMahon and Kurt Angle. Which it was more than we all thought it was. I mean, better than we thought it was going to be, maybe? I mean, showed just exactly what Shane can do, what he could put up with. Kurt Angle got to show, you know, that side of him. Which, I mean, you, don't get, you didn't get to see very often, you know? It wasn't his thing. The Olympic gold medalist, the Olympic hero. And, I mean, he just ensued all sorts of violence. And there's blood everywhere. It's probably the bloodiest match that I remember seeing him in, in WWE, by far. A memory could be, like, it's bad, but then this thing was just a full-fledged fight. I will say about it, though, Shane did cost Kurt winning a second straight King of the Ring earlier in the night. That did happen, which then led to, you know, even more animosity in this. It led to Kurt Angle throwing his medals down. Then we all know they're not the real ones, but he threw his medals down on the ground. Just, boom, before he even hit the ring. It shows the level that they had, you know, Kurt. Rage-wise and all that, because he got shafted out of King of the Ring. Can you be mad at him for getting, you know, being that mad when he gets shafted out to King of the Ring? I don't think he can. And it starts straight up. Kurt just comes in the ring, double legs him, you know, just drops him, and just starts going for it. And the match had everything he expected in it. Kurt being Kurt, doing some amateur stuff, and just beating the hell out of Shane. Shane did it, in fact, you know, do some slight amateur wrestling stuff to Kurt. And then roll out of the ring. And then, you know, the obvious chase ensued after that was done. He goaded him into it, took a couple laps. And then Kurt got on all fours and gave, you know, Shane his back. Kurt then turned around and clubbed the holy bejesus out of Shane. But, I mean, he gave him his back. And, you know, you're fine. You want to do that? Try me. And, I mean, I... He at least tried. But Shane got the, just the hell beat out of him. He was also the first one to introduce weapons into the match very shortly after that with a kendo stick. And you don't see them break too many times in matches where they're snapping and folding in half. Like It doesn't happen very often. You see people just clubbing people to death and it just keeps going. This one broke for, you know, with Shane hitting Kurt with it. Was it the strongest? Was it anything? We don't know, but he broke the damn thing. Which is saying a lot. And then he kept running, yeah. Kurt ate a ring post, he kept doing arm drags into the security barrier, the wall there. Ran him into the stairs. At one point, Shane jumped up on, you know, the security wall turned on. Jumped off, spun around, hit Kurt. So Kurt would fall over. Later on, jumped up on the wall behind Paul Heyman and good old JR doing commentary. And still, Paul Heyman with the microphone. No matter if you like what he's saying or not, the man's still one of the best people ever to put, have a microphone. Like, just give it to him, and you know it's going to be good. And all these people that still are, you know, slurring and stumbling. That, like, how often does Paul Heyman do that? Ever. Like, ever, ever. But he jumps over both of them, takes out Kurt. They get back into the ring. 
And you know, Shane starts being Shane. Throws the garbage cans in there. Garbage can lids. He introduces a handicap sign. Which he smacks Kurt with. Which, you hey, he doesn't like a good handicap sign. I used to love seeing him for a little bit there after the exit. When the spots were open, had the placard. Boom! Except for when people next to them didn't know how to drive. But that's a whole other argument. But introduces that and the trash cans. We all know. Shane O'Mac loved a good trash can. He put the one, you know, in the ropes there with his father at WrestleMania. When he went coast to coast and drop kicked it right into his teeth. It's just what he does. And he, you know, he beat Kurt with it. He was getting him with it. And then he goes and he looks over at the ropes and we all know he's not. And he, and, well, yes he is. He keeps trash can planted on top of Kurt, climbs up to the top rope. Gives a little prayer and does a beautiful shooting star press. Like, it was amazing. The kid's athletic as could be. could take a whoop and did a great shooting star. Kurt rolled out of the way, and when he rolled out of the way, he managed to make sure the trash can was still able to be right there so Shane could at least hit the thing like he was supposed to. So, that was amazing. Just to see the athleticism and the little screw it, let's go for it. This isn't going to feel good. And he still went for it anyway. And he could do it. And there's a lot of wrestlers that are on the roster that were that, that couldn't even consider ever doing that. And this was Shane, who, you know, not like he was ever, I mean, he was obviously got training to do it, but not nearly as much experience and all that as the rest of the people. And he pulled off a beautiful shooting star press, which then, you know, again, though, landed on a garbage can, didn't go so well. These things do happen. And when it gets out, then it breaks out outside again. Which you'd expect. It's a street fight. You know, it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. It needs to happen. And you see Kurt go for that suplex on the ramp. And that is when Kurt broke his tailbone. And you could clearly see it while he was laying there and trying to get up. He knew he done did something. He did not look happy. He was not moving happy. And I might add, this is like, I think, they still had like 15 or so minutes left in the match after he did this. And he still went out there and was all over God's creation. I mean, going off the top rope and stuff, I mean, like, it's just unfathomable what he still did with that broken tailbone. But he did it. And then that brings us to the thing that every time I watch, no matter how many times you see it, if you don't cringe when this happens, I'm sorry, I do not know what is wrong with you. I cannot fully grasp how you do not cringe, but when, yeah, Kurt goes for that belly to belly, which is supposed to be in the sugar glass, so, you know, it just explodes, so, you know, whatever. And, man, the thud of the back of Shane's head. When he just bounces right off because there's plexiglass and or I mean, when the glass it was supposed to be, one didn't just give and the thud of the back of his head hitting that concrete. I could just imagine what Vince looked like back there in Gorilla because yeah, you know he was like everyone was there. I imagine just apparently they're telling him to call it off, but you know Kurt couldn't hear it like in his one ear. Like it's just but the thud of the back of Shane's head splatting on the concrete. If you haven't seen it, go back and just watch that match. And wait till they get right there. And just... I mean, it is disgusting. Like, I've hit the back of my head off of things and had some weird looks from people. You go back and watch that, I understand why people gave me some weird looks on the back of my head, slapped off, like, went through a slab of concrete and stuff. Like, I get it. It is the most grotesque, like, just sound. One of the worst ever. Maybe it hurts worse because I've been there and I understand it. I know exactly what his head was going through, but damn. I don't know how he kept going. Yeah, he got back up, and Kurt, th- I mean, just think with a broken tailbone doing, you know, that kind of suplex. Broken tailbone. Picks him back up. But think of the force he used to throw him and him go through it on the second suplex. How much more force he put there, landing on that broken tailbone. Shane laying there just bleeding all over God's creation. And then when they're in that spot, they turn around, and he tries to do another belly-to-belly through it. He just bounces off of it, slides down. Goes for another one. Bong, just bounces right off the damn thing again. Slides down. And he throws his ass through it 
head first on the third try, just face first right through the thing. And just to see him go exploding out of it, he took it like a man. I mean, Kurt's sitting there bleeding from all over at this point. Shane's bleeding like a stuck pig. And again, after he bounced his head off the concrete, I don't even think that he was like, I mean, he was still, you know, flipping and taking the bumps and doing what he had to do, but I don't know how, I'm not so sure how much the lights were on in that situation in Shane McMahon's head, because that dude just took a wallop it. And then when he's laying out there, Kurt tries to go for a pin, and Kyoto tells him, no, he can't. It has to happen in the ring. And you can see Kurt is actually physically like, are you kidding me? Trying to drag him, he falls over between, like, the abuser and the match, the blood, his tailbone breaking. So he goes and steals one of the carts that they have, you know, for the equipment and everything. You know, those are heavy. See people smash people with them all the time. Throw Shane over that, and the amount of force he had to have in his legs, because, you know, the ramp is like, look cloth on the ramp, the one just straight concrete. So you know that whatever that was, it, those wheel casters did not probably want to cooperate nearly as good as they should have. And then they get to the ring and goes for the pin and Shane's dumb enough that he kicks out. I don't even fat like, I don't, like, I know that's how it was supposed to go. I still have a hard time believing, like, after, again, I've been there with that thud. I know I got up and I was moving. I just, I wasn't bleeding like, you know, I was stabbed at the same time. Didn't get dropped on the back of my head a few more times afterwards. And then we see Shane fight back with garbage can lids, because he always loved the garbage cans, to Kurt. We see him, I mean, in this match, he did an angle slam to Kurt. Kurt kicked out. He had him in the ankle lock. Kurt countered it. You know, like, didn't work, but, I mean, Shane still put up a hell of a fight. Then he gets thrown up on the top rope. Where a piece of ply whatever came from. I mean, why was he? But I don't know. But Kurt puts that up as a perch on the top rope in the corner. Don't even know how he didn't like it, how it worked out that well. I think we even heard Kurt say he has no idea how it worked out well. And he goes for the angle slam off of that, off the top rope. Lands it with broken, you know, tailbone. Which I imagine when he landed from that height on that, I have a very pleasant feeling he laid there for a few seconds one to make it you know because the brutalness of the brutality and the violence and the blood loss like everything of the match took out of him but also because he was probably laying there going gd that hurts it had to be like the force that i mean well, the ropes aren't that high yeah but when you had like the leg height and all that to where you are you know like what four feet or so Plus his legs, so I mean that's like seven, eight feet. You know, at that point, slamming down into you know, wood. There's a little bit of foam on there. I mean, there's a little bit of give that just thunk. Even if he landed right, that had to hurt like hell. Hurt like hell. He finally got. Yeah, he finally put away Shane and got the victory. One, two, three. It's all over. And I mean, Kurt was beat to death. I. Again, broken tailbone. And he kept going for those suplexes. And that second one he threw to actually get him through the glass. And that first piece of glass, I don't know how he did it. Like the amount of force and all that to get that over. How Shane was able to keep even functioning after the... Of his brain splattering. Like, I don't get any of it. So, that's super impressive. How Kirk got up and walked out of there. I mean, he's a freak. But broken tailbone after that, like, fall from the top. I mean, I don't blame him for laying there for as long as he did. That had to suck. Absolutely suck. And then, hey, even worse, he had to go see a quite possibly quite angry Vince McMahon on the other side of the curtain. In Gorilla. After he wanted the match to stop, but he wanted to go out and stop it. He didn't, but, I mean, the standing ovation that the two of them got, obviously, you know, helped from all the fans. Harold, the boys loved it. All of that. I don't know how Shane, you know, he needed help to get up the ramp. Obviously, I'm not surprised by that fact. Again, I don't know how he was still conscious. Those legs had to be just ooh. And yeah, they did help him up the ramp until the very end. Where, you know, he took a few steps, stumbled. They helped him back. But I mean, the amount of stitches and staples and everything that those two had to endure after that, and the beating and getting glass out, the beating that they took. And it was probably, again, the bloodiest match most vile one I've seen, you know, can remember seeing Kurt Angle in his WWE tenure. And he did some pretty big things, but that street fight with Shane, I mean, 
Maybe it's just because it was with Shane. We all know Shane. Look at him at Mania with Mania like with Mania from AJ. Doing matches with Taker. The stuff he did off the Tron. I mean, coast to coast with his dad. This man, like, Shane, whenever he goes out there, he's getting mauled. He gets big fight feel. He does all the crazy stuff he can. And thankfully, he only does it every once in a while. Because if he tried to do that, like, every night, he would have been dead a long time ago. But totally one of the best matches ever. If you're looking for Kurt Angle being angry and vicious, watch that one. You want to see Shane McMahon? Be Shane Mc... Yeah, do Shane McMahon things and be Shane McMahon? Be Shane O'Mac? Juking and jiving, dancing around, throwing his jabs. Damn footwork still has it. For all the... What? We're almost 20 years now. Still got it. Still dances around. Don't worry. There was that in the match. I want to see some blood and violence. People going through some glass. Watch it. You want to see a man break his tailbone and continue to go and throw in all those suplexes and going off the top rope and all the stuff he did. Watch it. I mean, if you just want to see an ass whooping, definitely watch it. It's one of those good ones. I, you never forget about it when you see it. You know, somebody, you watch it? Yes. And you can tell people what happened in the match, but if you haven't watched it or haven't watched it in a while, I highly recommend going back and watch it because it was just gold. Pure, pure, unadulterated, just gold. For a half hour or so. I mean, what they put each other through. What they were willing to do for one another. And the trust they put in one another for that match. Is on an epic proportion. Like, it's amazing. So, thanks for watching. Like, share, follow, comment. Follow it on other things. Tell other people. Get the word out there. Tell me what you want me to watch. Tell me if you want us to both watch something. You can come on and talk with me. Write some stuff on the page. Tell me what you think about all of it. Just get the word out there. Be nice to each other. Be kind to each other. Maybe even watch Rod Night if you're into it. I mean, we're on the road to WrestleMania. The product was getting better before we hit that. So, yeah, it should be good. This is when the best writing comes about. So, take care of one another. Be nice. Like, share, follow, comment. Do all that. And until tomorrow, my friends, when we go over Raw, have a good rest of your day. Peace.